Hello, guys. I'm Viu. Welcome to the first video of Vivshi lecture series, the basic introduction of Raspberry Pi Pico. Raspberry Pi Pico uses RP2040, a microcontroller chip, which is designed by Raspberry Pi Foundation. Pico's length is 51 millimeters, width is 21 millimeters, play thickness is 1 millimeters. The PCB uses an immersion gold process, takes advantage of the castellated edges to solder Pico directly to carrier board. Therefore, Pico can either solder 2.54 mm headers or directly solder the Pico to the motherboard. These two 2.54 mm pitch 20 pin headers have a lateral spacing of 17.78 mm, which means they can be installed on a breadboard. Now, let's learn about the basic hardware of Pico. Let's take a look at a few points. The onboard button is not a reset button, but a start selection button. When the button is not pressed, the MCU is reset or powered on, and it starts from fresh. When the button is pressed, the MCU is reset or powered on, and it enters the UF2 download mode. If there is a reset button, it will be easier for UF2 downloading without pulling or plugging the USB cable over and over. The flash used by Pico is Vimbons W25Q16 and the on-chip space is 2 megabytes. However, the RP2040 supports up to 16 megabytes, which means when follow-up projects require more flash space, the flash can be replaced with a larger one. Pico uses a 12M crystal oscillator. If you use RP2040 to develop low cost and high performance projects in the future, and there is no very strict timing requirement, you can use internal RC oscillation or input other clock signals from the outside through GPIO, which can effectively control the cost. Okay, the introduction of hardware is finished here. Now, let's move on and know about the ecosystem of Pico. Yes, you're right. It is ecosystem. Some people may ask, what kind of ecosystem there can be for boards or chips that have only been released for a few weeks? If you have used the products of the Raspberry Pi series, you will know how rich the Raspberry Pi ecosystem is. In my opinion, it is the strongest ecosystem in the world among similar products. Backed by such a powerful Raspberry Pi ecosystem, Pico can attract a large part of the ecology and the maker players, even fans of the Raspberry Pi. Some guys may be wondering why I think that Pico can retain Raspberry Pi ecosystem and is it just an MCU? For sure, no. When you understand the naming rules of the RP2040 MCU, you will know that this is definitely not only an MCU but a series of MCUs. Now, let's go to see the naming rules of RP2040. RP stands for Manufacturer Name, Raspberry Pi. The first number, 2, stands for the number of cores. The second number, 0, stands for the ARM Cortex M0+, one of the most power-saving core of the ARM series. The third number 4 stands for 264 kilobytes RAM. The fourth number 0 stands for there is no non-volatile memory inside. After knowing the naming rules, you should also feel that the Raspberry Pi official has a clear plan for the product. It shows that the Raspberry Pi official will launch more MCUs in the near future to build a better ecosystem. And we believe Raspberry Pi official has the ability to do that.
Now, Pico supports two software development environments, including MicroPython and C, C++. Both of them are officially provided and maintained. RTThread official has successfully run RTThread on Pico. Also, the CEO and the founder of Arduino stated on his official website that he will port the Arduino core to the RP2040. These are Mogul's reactions to Pico after knowing released for a few weeks. We believe there will be more software development environments support in the future. Let's compare the performance of similar development boards. In basic performance, Pico gets better than Arduino Uno R3 and Micro BV2. Regarding the price, it's neither 23 USD dollars of Arduino Uno R3, not 15 USD dollars of Micro BV2. It's only 4 USD dollars, which is incredible. Now, we are going to explain the Pico schematic. We will divide it into several sections and give a detailed explanation of the schematic diagram. First of all, let's see the power section. In normal use, the micro USB interface will be connected to PC USB interface or Raspberry Pi through the USB cable. That is, VBUS is a 5 volts, 500 milliampere power input under normal circumstances. With a shocky diode D1 as isolation, the voltage of V system will have a voltage drop of 0.1 volt to 0.2 volts. That is, V system is normally around 4.8 volts. V system is input to the bulk booster DC to DC converted chip of RT6150 through a 47UF ceramic the persistor C1. The input range of the DC DC chip is 1.8 to 5.5 volts and the output is 3.3 volts. The 3V3EM is the enable pin. Normally it is put out to V system through the R2 receiver sister and the DC to DC chip works normally but we can put down the 3V3 EM pin to turn off the 3.3 volts power supply. In addition, the PS pin is grounded by default, weakly put down to ground through R8. The DC DC chip works in PWM mode by default. In this mode, the conversion efficiency is the highest. The GPIO23 can be set to the high level to set the PS pin to 1 to enter the PWM mode. In this mode, power supply ripple will be smaller and the conversion efficiency will be lower. There are three main ways which can safely power the Raspberry Pi Pico. The choices depends entirely on your application. We can supply power to the Pico through the micro USB connector of the device itself, just like the image 1A. Or supply power through the VBUS pin, the input is 5 volts. Or supply power through V system pin, the input is 1.8 volts to 5.5 volts. The official considers that we may use a second power supply method, so it provides us with three power supply methods instructions. The picture above is the simplest circuit diagram. The second power supply is connected to V system through a circuit diode. But the second power supply reduces the voltage loss through a diode like VBUS, which reduces the overall power supply efficiency. Some people may wonder why it is necessary to add this diode. Can it be connected directly? Actually, the main reason is in case the voltage of these two power supplies are not the same, this diode will prevent current from flowing backward into the lower voltage one and damaging the component. What we are seeing now is the second circuit officially provided by the Raspberry Pi. Compared with the previous circuit, when the bus is removed, 
it will form an ideal diagram circuit and the resistance will become very small. The official data is that the maximum voltage drop of the P modes uses is 0.9 volts and the resistance is about 1 ohm. Now let's move to the third solution which uses battery power. The overall solution is similar with the second solution. The official reminder, please know that it is the best to add a battery protection chip or a protection board, otherwise it may explode. Now we are going to introduce some important points. The USB pin coming out of the chip must be connected to the outside with two 27 ohm resistors in series. It can't be connected directly. The ADC reference voltage is provided by 3.3 volts on the board by default. But we can also use an external 3 volts or 1.8 volts reference power supply. The official recommends that it should not be lower than 3 volts. Here is the power supply of the internal core. To stabilize the voltage, we have to increase its capacity appropriately. We use a 2.2 UVA filter capacitor here. IOVDD. This is a GPIO power supply. We use 100 NAFA capacitors for filtering on the periphery. DVDD. This is the internal core power supply. It uses 1.1 volt power supply for external power supply. USD VDD, this is an USB 4 b interface power supply and use 3.3 volts power supply. Now we see the booster button and flash. The booster button is not a reset button but a start selection button. When the button is not pressed, the MCU is reset to power on. It will start from fresh. When the button is pressed, the MCU is reset to power on. If you enter the UF to download mode, the flash is Winbounds W25Q16. Okay, we won't explain too much about it. Let's move on to see the clock circuit. Now, here is the clock circuit. For this circuit, we only need to know that the R14 is used for current limiting to prevent overcurrent from reducing or damaging the lifespan of the crystal oscillator. Now we see the ADC sampling circuit. Resistance is divided by R5 and R6 to obtain one third resistance, which is given to GPIO29 through an M MOS. The function of the M MOS is to prevent resistant current from leaking to 3.3 volts network when resistance has voltage and 3.3 volts is cut off. LED circuit R3 acts as a current limiting resistor. This is the debug pinout. Okay, let's move on to operating. As we all know, the Lightning program is the first program to learn all development boards, just like learning all programming languages first to learn Hello World. It has a special meaning for programmers. Now we open the Raspberry Pi's official website, select the hardware, and then select the Pico. Then we can go to download the MicroPython firmware. Click download. Now we cancel the download here because we have already downloaded it. Open the folder and connect it according to the official method. After power on, there will be a virtual USB flash drive. Then drag it in. At this time, it will automatically run the MicroPython firmware. Now, we open the official website of Sony, sony.org. We have completed the download. Open Sonic and click next, next, next. We need to create an icon on the desktop. You can choose according to your need. 
then wait for the installation to complete. Okay, our Thony has been installed, and we now need to install the Thony plugin. The official provides us with a Thony plugin. We find Thony P code and then click Release. We select the corresponding plugin, and then we have installed it. We just need to open Thony and click on the plugin management. Install from the local file. Find our plugin file and start the installation. Just need to wait for a while. We need to select the compiler and then select MicroPython Raspberry Pi Pico. Click OK. It will automatically connect to Pico by default and then start programming. OK, we have written a Pico program and save it on Pico. Select main.py to save and override it. We have written a program before, so we will override it in this time. Click to run and Pico will run the program that keeps the LED breaking with one second interval. Let's talk about how to Pico through C code. The official provides us with a blank UF2 file. We only need to download its UF2 file directory and light directory. We have finished downloading here. We only need to power on the Pico, enter the UF2 download mode, and then drag the UF2 file in. At this time, the Pico will automatically enter the flexion state. Okay, we are now completed LED blinking through MicroPython and C program. This video ends here. See you next time.